After DC voters overwhelmingly approved a referendum to become the 51st state, local officials are making yet another push for autonomy on Capitol Hill. We are here to deliver a petition to Congress for statehood. But the moment is bittersweet, for since Donald Trump's election, the district has been under constant fire from Congress Republicans. Senator Marco Rubio and Representative Jason Chaffetz have tried to overturn DC legislation on hot button issues ranging from assisted suicide to gun control. Their efforts have drawn sharp criticism from local council members and from DC's mayor, Muriel Bowser. We tell them that almost a thousand people move here each and every month, that businesses are moving here, that our government services are fantastic, and that the best thing the federal government can do for us is leave us alone. This council of the District of Columbia passes the laws for us. Council member Charles Allen says Trump's presidency has actually invigorated the cause by reinforcing a sense of shared values among DC residents. President Trump does not appear to share the same values as many people in the District of Columbia. And, um, and so that's why we're on the edge about it. But that's also why we're having to take steps to, to make sure that we are protecting uh, what we hold dear and what we cherish. Over on Capitol Hill, Statehood activists face the difficult task of lobbying legislators from other states as their own representatives have no voting power in Congress. The challenge with Washington, D.C. is that there have not been a lot of people that know about our plight. We've got to do a better job of educating people outside of Washington, D.C., people in the nation and internationally, that we don't have a right to a vote in our national legislature. Though odds are clearly stacked against statehood, the cause has become a cry of resistance for the District of Columbia in the era of Donald Trump.